All right, first let's do a little bit of review. Uh, some time ago we talked about how atoms work, and specifically we talked about the relationship between protons and uh, photons rather, and electrons. So here we have our old friend the hydrogen atom, the simplest atom in the universe. And if you recall, when we talked about the nature of light, we're, we're taught to believe that the reason we see that light is because of a heating process, and that's not entirely true. It's actually more of a cooling process that causes the photons to be emitted. Recall that when we heat up an atom, it goes into an excited state, and by that we mean the electron jumps out into the high-speed lane. It continues on its way, like so. But eventually, that electron is going to want to drop back down into the slow speed lane to go to what's called a ground state. And to do that, it needs to dump energy. And the way that electron dumps energy is it emits a photon. We all know what photons are. Now, different atoms are constructed differently. Uh, a carbon atom has six electrons. An oxygen atom has eight electrons, and so on. And as a consequence, the photons that they emit come out at different frequencies, different wavelengths. So what we're saying in a nutshell is that the different elements each have their own specific colors. Colors are determined by frequency and wavelength. Astronomers are able to use an analysis of light coming from distant objects like galaxies and stars to do a chemical analysis. This is how astronomers know that a star has so much hydrogen, so much helium, and so on. In the early 1900s, when my grandparents were kids, so that puts us in living memory, so far as mankind knew, the universe consisted of the Milky Way galaxy, and that was it. Now, I've shown you photographs of the Andromeda Galaxy, but back then, so far as anyone knew, the Andromeda Galaxy was the Andromeda Nebula. And nebula is just a fancy word for a gigantic cloud. Well, why was this so? Well, because the technology of telescopes just hadn't gotten that far yet. In the 1920s, an American astronomer by the name of Edwin Hubble got uh, first crack at what was then the newest and biggest telescope in the world. It had a main lens that was 100 inches in diameter. Now the way astronomy telescopes work is that the larger the main lens, the higher the resolution, similar to a digital camera. The more pixels you have, the more resolution you have. So Hubble uh, also had another couple of tools at his disposal. Uh, another new technology, photography. Astronomers were finding that they could get much better results by slapping a camera on an eyepiece rather than the Mark I not, Mod Zero eyeball, taking time exposures. And also, another new piece of uh, equipment or tool, if you will, was something called a standard candle. A standard candle is an object, uh, say a variable star, for instance, whereby an astronomer can measure great distances. So Hubble took a look at what was thought to be the Andromeda Nebula and discovered that no, in fact, it is an entirely separate galaxy from our own. And he used standard candles to measure its distance and discovered that this was roughly two million light years away. And then he started discovering other galaxies even further away. He did a spectroscopic analysis of light coming from these galaxies and discovered that the frequencies that he was looking for, pertaining to hydrogen, helium, and so on, were there, but they were lower than they ought to have been. Now, recall from our earlier discussion of the Doppler effect, when frequencies are of, uh, of the frequencies of a wave are lower than they should have been, that tells you that the source of those waves is moving away from you. In other words, what Hubble has, is discovering at this point is that these galaxies are moving away. And he also discovers that the further away they are, the faster they're moving away from us. Now jump forward 100 years to present day. It's taken 100 years of data points for us to 
really put a number on this, but there is a direct relationship between the speed at which these galaxies are moving away from us and their distances. And that gets us to the Hubble Law. The Hubble Law says that the velocity of these objects is equal to their distance times the Hubble constant. What is the Hubble constant? Well, it works this way. The Hubble constant equals 71 kilometers per second per mega parsec. What is a parsec? Well, a parsec is a unit of distance that astronomers use. One parsec abbreviated PC equals 3.26 light years. Recall that a light year is the distance that light will travel in one Earth years. It comes out to roughly 6 trillion miles. Mega, that's 10 to the 6. Alright, so that's the Hubble Law. So, a way to get a feel for this is to uh, actually play with an example. Let's say that we discover an object, say a galaxy, that is 7 billion light years away. All right. And using the Hubble law, let's find, let's find out how fast it's moving away from us. So we change that to 7 times 10 to the ninth light years. And now we're going to convert light years into parsecs. Very simple, we're just going to take 7 and divide it by 3.26. And I got 2.147. Alright, so that's its distance in parsecs. Now let's figure out how fast it's moving away from us. So we're going to use this formula here. Velocity equals distance times the Hubble constant. So, distance times 10 to the ninth times the Hubble constant per mega parsec, and mega is 10 to the 6. All right, so let's expand this out a little bit 2.147 times. 10 to the ninth parsecs times 71 kilometers per second per 10 to the sixth parsecs over 1. And now we can cancel out 10 to the sixth here. Cancel this out. This becomes 10 to the third. times 71 that equals 152.454 times 10 to the third kilometers per second now, okay, that's a nice big number, but let's, uh, let's reduce this down to standard units. Now, kilometer is 10 to the third, 
So kilo, 10 to the third, times 10 to the third, that's 10 to the sixth. I'm going to bump this decimal point over two more places to the left. So that's going to give me 1.525 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now, that number that right there might ring a bell a little bit for some of you. And just to remind you, we call this C, the speed of light, equals 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So what we're saying is that this galaxy is moving away from us at roughly half the speed of light. Let's find out exactly what that what it comes out to. So we're going to take 1.525 times 10 to the eighth divided by 3.0 times 10 to the eighth. I got 5.08. So that's telling us that that galaxy is moving away from us at 0.508c, roughly half the speed of light. Now, let's be very clear about this. That galaxy is not moving through space at half the speed of light. If it was, it would, it would be torn to shreds. The most amazing part of this is that it's not the galaxy moving through space, it's space itself that is expanding and dragging the galaxy along with it. A way to think about this is think of raisin bread. So you're going to bake a loaf of raisin bread, so you prepare the dough and then you mix in the raisins you throw it in a pan, then you throw that pan into the oven, and what's that dough going to do? It's going to rise. And the distance between those raisins is going to get bigger. But do the raisins get bigger? No. Are the raisins moving through the dough? No. The dough itself is expanding. That's essentially what's happening in the universe. But wait, there's a little bit more here. So, first of all, uh, this is a good spot for you to hit pause and write these formulas down because I'm going to throw them at you a little bit later. So be sure you get this, be sure you get this, be sure you get this, all right? Okay, now I'm going to erase it. Here's the very first physics you ever learned back in grade school. Distance equals rate times time. That tells us that time equals distance over rate. So if I told you that there was a, a vehicle moving directly away from us, and it was moving <clears throat> at 50 miles per hour, and it was 100 miles away, you could do distance, 100 miles, rate, 50, to tell us that that car had been moving away from us for two hours. So, using that idea, let's figure out how long this galaxy has been moving away from us. So, do we have the distance? Yeah. 7 times 10 to the ninth light years. Do we have the rate? In terms of light, yes we do. 0.508c. So, time is going to equal the distance 7 times 10 to the ninth light years divided by 0.508c. Now, recall, c refers to the speed of light. What does that l refer to? The speed of light. What's the y? Time. What's distance equal? Rate times time. That's why light year is a unit of distance. So, what can I do with the L and the C? They both refer to the same thing. I can 
cancel them. So now I'm going to take 7 and divide it by 0 0.508. I got 13.78. What's 10 to the ninth? Billion. And if I really round it, I can do this. We've just calculated the age of the universe. And here's the remarkable thing. Every object that we look at from this planet that is 7 billion light years away, it is moving away from us at that speed. Every object that we look at moving that is further away that, than 7 billion light years, it's moving faster. Every object that we're looking at that is closer, it's moving slower. But every time, every time we measure the distance Every time we measure the velocity, it remains consistent with the Hubble law. And every time we do this bit of arithmetic, it comes back to 13.8 billion years. So how do we know how old the universe is? This is very, there right there is a very strong indicator of how long the universe has been kicking around. This is why astronomers say that if you roll the clock backwards, Roll the clock backwards, the universe doesn't expand, it contracts, 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 until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to this point right here. There's something to mull over. I have one more thing to show you, but that's on another video.